What is the bunker gear made of? Burnout gear is made of three things. It's made of PVI, Kevlar, and Nomex. It also has three barriers. This is Pokey, by the way. Everybody say hey to Pokey. Hi, Hi, Pokey. It has three barriers. It has a moisture barrier, a thermal barrier, and an outer shell for protection and fire. Can the tank explode if you're inside a structure that is burning? There are actually a couple of reasons that one of these would not explode in a fire. One is that these actually have this pressure relief valve. This burst disc would actually go before the tank would explode. It's made to fail before the tank would blow up. Also, these tanks are made to hold about 6,000 pounds worth of pressure, but we only fill them up to about 4,500 pounds. So when they get heated up, they have a long distance to go before they actually fill this cylinder. Another reason this won't blow up is that while we are in that atmosphere, we're using up the air as fast as it's swelling from the heat. And lastly, if we were ever in heat that was enough to make one of these bottles explode, it would compromise our turnout gear and we would be fried from the heat before this ever exploded anything. So what's the uh, SCBA made of? That's a good question. It's actually got an aluminum shell on the inside, and you can see it's about that thick with aluminum, but the outside is wrapped with carbon fibers, and you can see the carbon fiber part right there. This is a view of the inside of one of them right here, so you can see how sturdy that is, but lightweight. Wow, that's amazing. Thanks for telling me. Okay, we have a question. If you run out of oxygen, do you have backup? Hey guys, we're going to go over some things of, uh, about the question of a firefighter having backup here. We got Cabate Bird here. He's going to go over a couple of things to show us how we go about that. All right. Basically what I have on my back right here is a 45 minute bow. It won't last everyone in the fire 45 minutes due to our individual fitness levels. So one person it might last 20 minutes, but another person it might last a whole 45 minutes. But we have a couple ways to go about that in case we do need emergency air at that point in time. So one thing that we have on every air pack at Decatur Fire Department is called a buddy breathing system. What this system does, it allows you to hook into your fellow firefighters air and use their air for a short period of time but you're both are breathing off the same bottle so that bottle will actually go a lot faster okay another thing that we have is called a rescue intervention team that team will come in the fire to rescue down firefighters with this pack what this pack basically has in it is an air bottle and it will hook them up to this bottle in order to rescue them at that point in time um, also on the fire scene on every truck we also have multiple air packs, as you see right here. So we have multiple bottles in order to switch out at any time that we might need it outside of the fire. But inside of the fire, the only bottles that we have on us are the ones that we take in during the fire. And if you ran out of air, what would you do as a last resort? As a last resort, what, um, we have these things called Nomex hoods. So a lot of people, they pull the hood over their mask, unhook so they won't be what we call sucking mass because you have no air in the bottle so we put that hood over our mat the hole in our mask and we get down as low as we can to the carpet because smoke goes down so we get as close as we can to the floor and crawl out the fire what is the lifetime of bunker gear i always wanted to find out you know how long does bunker gear really last and i know you know the answer for that well our bunker gear lasts 10 years um, after that, we can put it in storage, uh, use it for live fire training, uh, demonstrations. Um, some personnel keep their gear and use it for training evolutions. At any point in time, you take the bunk again, just discard it, get rid of it, or uh, is it longer? Once, we, once the, the material starts to break down and degrade, then at that point, then we'll throw it away. Okay. That sounds good. Once again, I just got to ask the captain the question. He knows the answers. Thank you. Can the reflectors of the bunker gears wear off? These reflective stripes on the gear definitely do fade away and melt in fire. If that ever happens, this turnout gear actually needs to be repaired in that case. It can't be used if it's got damage to it. So that happens and it gets repaired soon after. What is the cost of the equipment? Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, this is Chief Washington. She's going to let us know the cost that we spent on bunker gear or turnout gear for our department. Hey, Chief. Hi. So there's several different variations of bunker gear, but here in the city of Decatur, we use a fairly high quality gear. Our gear usually runs us about $2,000 per set. 
Once you factor in the gloves, the turnout boots, the hood, and some other things, we usually spend an average of $23 to $2,500 on turnout gear. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now we know it's possible. All right. <laughs> is the hose made out of the same material as the bunker gear? Hey, the hose is not actually made of the same thing the bunker gear is made of. Earlier in the video, we described what the bunker gear was made of. The fire hose is actually made of two things. On the inside, you have a rubber lining, and on the outside, you have a woven polyester material that keeps it from getting abrasions, uh, mildew, and mold on it. So how do you clean the bunker gear from the toxics and chemicals you're exposed to? I'm going to tell you how to clean bunker gear. He's been doing this for over 20 years now, and he's the expert at cleaning bunker gear. Now, go ahead, Pokey. Let us know. Go to Sam. First thing you do with your bunker gear, you want to take the lining out. This is our lining right here of your bunker gear. And you would like to get a good hot soap and water. Hot soap and water, a brush for, for, for a brush. A soft and, one or a hard one? A hard brush. Hard one? Okay. And just scrub it. Just basically you scrub. Go. Give it a good scrub. Just like you wash it. Can I air dry it or can I just put it in the dryer? Well, you can air dry it. Okay. You can air dry Air dryer is better. Putting it in the dryer will probably damage. Okay. So, air dryer would be better. And I think when we get like toxic chemicals in the fires and stuff, we got to send it to an extractor pretty much to get the chemicals out. If it's something more, if it's a dangerous chemical. Or blood. Or blood. Or blood. Yeah. We'll have it shipped away. We couldn't have cleaned it here. We have to have it shipped away if it's something that's uh, foul. All right, you got it from the expert right here. Pokey's been doing it for over 20 years. All right, thanks, folks. Hey, neighbors. <laughs> Our firefighters it taught breathing techniques when, when gear on. So there was a question asked if we use any breathing techniques while we have the mask and the CBA on. Originally, we used uh, skip breathing, but we kind of went away from that because research, research showed that we retain too much carbon dioxide, so they suggested that we either hum, you know, uh, hum, a, hum a song, or uh, either have gum or a can, a candy in our mouth to retain our, uh, our, our oxygen. Quick question, do you have any special liquids to put inside the mask so it doesn't become foggy? Guys, uh, the question was, do we spray any liquids in the mask to keep it from foggy? The answer is no. We usually keep our mask clean, usually before uh, but anything, the first thing in the morning, we clean them out with a little water, but they always dry it uh, inside. Um, and basically, no, we do not. What we do is we open a little bypass. Sorry, you got here. It's right here. It's a bypass valve. And it's a purge valve. And you open it up, and you defog the mask, and you close it back. All right? And it, what it does is it's always under a negative pressure when you breathe in and out. So it pretty much self-defogs uh, when you breathe in and out. But in certain conditions, you may have to use this, but you have no choice. Is that it? That's it. Where did the term bunker gear come from? Nobody's 100% sure why this is called bunker gear, but one of the possible explanations is this used to be kept in the bunk room with the firefighters before we knew that it was toxic and shouldn't be in the same room with us. So it was named bunker gear after the fact that it was kept in the bunk room. Another possible reason is that in the wartime, when they would operate the cannons, they used to wear pants that were really thick and protected, much like these. So that could be another reason why they're called bunker pants. For how long can the bunker gear sustain heat and or fire? Okay, maybe you guys can tell us a little bit about how much heat the gear can withstand and what other factors are involved with the gear protecting you in heat. Well, uh, bunker gear can withstand probably uh, 480 degrees with untreated cotton. But usually if you're in a fire scene or in a fire, you're going to worry about your mask first. Uh, the gear itself, if it's wet, what's going to happen, Cole? Well, if it's wet, what's going to happen is going to steam conversion. It's going to actually steam. It's going to steam you. So a lot of things go into it, how, how long uh, your gear is going to last in the fire. It, it, uh, a lot of, if it's dirty, that can uh, affect it. If it's uh, got chemicals on it, that can affect it. The age, that can affect it. It's certain if it's been sitting in the sun, if the, the, the fibers are dried out, that can affect how long it's going to last in the fire. And... Um, that's pretty much it. So every gear is different. Different, different manufacturers, uh, uh, better materials. So that's basically it.
And uh, just never, always remember that your gear could be 480 degrees, but when you touch the gear and you push it toward your skin, the factor is going to burn a lot quicker than the outside of the gear. So you will feel the heat. Do you have anything to say, Sam? No. Thank you for participating and asking us questions about our fire care indicator fire. <laughs>